This video will cover how to get started creating a quiz in Canvas and we'll have a quick overview of the options available and where everything is located. So to get started creating a quiz in Canvas, we have to go to the quizzes section on the left hand side menu. When we click the word quizzes, we will see any quizzes we've previously created, as well as on the top right hand corner, a plus quiz button. When we click that button, we can get started creating a quiz. Quizzes are by default start off named unnamed quiz because they get saved regardless if we press cancel or not. So it can manage to keep track of our changes as we are doing them for the most part. So the first thing we need to start is provide a name for the quiz. So we're going to call this midterm. And I'm adding in the date as well to provide the students more information in that one title. This is, of course, optional, but the midterm um, title that I put in there is what the students will see first and foremost. They will see this in their calendar, in their dashboard, in their module. So this title is the most information they will see um, up front. Then we can have quiz instructions. We have an entire box where we can enter as much or as little text as we need to, as well as attach files, embed images, just like a regular Canvas page or any assignment prompt as well. So for example, I might summarize here. I'm summarizing here all the different uh, pieces of information for them, how many questions there are, that they're allowed to use the notes or the book. If you would like them to use, for example, a, a cheat sheet that you provide, they can also, you can put that in here so they can see it. So once we have set up the, the name of the quiz, as well as the instructions for the quiz, we can then proceed to set up all the other options. One thing of note is that the questions themselves have their own tab on the top here where we have details and questions. So details is where we set up all the options. Questions if, is where we can set up all the questions. Do not post the questions uh, themselves in the quiz instructions because the students are able to see these quiz instructions before the start uh, date of the quiz. So keep in mind that that's why the questions have their own sections and that's where you should put the questions themselves. Not in the instructions because if you put them into into the instructions they will be able to see that as soon as the quiz is published regardless of where what time the quiz actually starts the other things we can set up on this details page are the quiz type we're going to go with a graded quiz and also we can set up some options such as the ability to shuffle answers for multiple choice, for example. We can shuffle the answer so the one student will see one uh, the correct answer as the second option in the list. Another student will see it as the fourth option. So it moves them around. Of course, if we turn this on, we cannot have our options start as a b c d or anything like that because the students will get something weird like d a b c instead of a b c d but otherwise we can use shuffle answers to move the options around for multiple choice and other question types we can also set a time limit for this particular midterm i'm setting it up at 60 minutes you can enter any time here with the 60 minutes uh, within this minutes box, everything in minutes. We can also allow them to have multiple attempts. And if we turn this on, we get to decide if we want to keep the highest score, latest score, or an average. And we can even control how many attempts they get by clicking to the left of allowed attempts and entering a, a, a number of attempts they're allowed to do going to uncheck this then we have uh, several options 
to control how they see the feedback information. We have an entire video covering all the different options available for this, but this is where you control if they see which questions they got wrong, if they see what the correct answer is, you get to control all of that in these settings right here. And then we can also choose to show one question at a time. So therefore they will see one question and they'll have to move to the next question and back and forth to answer questions. However, if we show one question at a time, we can also lack, lock the questions after answering, meaning when they move to the next question, they can't come back and change their answer. So that is something important depending on how you want to approach the quiz. You might want to show them one question at a time. It does have benefits in terms of the fact that they uh, need to go through each question at a time. They can't use questions to influence um, their answers. It's a lot easier for them to um, get ch uh, check in with someone else or do anything uh, untowards with this setup. However, it removes their ability to uh, manage their time during the quiz. If they only see one question at a time, especially if you lock the questions after answering, then they cannot use time management skills to choose to answer the questions that uh, they know the answer quickly and the questions that they find more difficult at the end or vice versa. They can't make those decisions. They need to deal with the question as they are coming at them. So do keep that in mind if you use these options that it does influence uh, their ability to assess the questions and manage their time for the questions. Uh, the uh, last options on the bottom is where you can set up the dates for the quiz. So there are three different dates here. There is a due date and then an available from an available until date. The way these works is the due date is to mark by which point in time is this quiz considered on time. You can have the quiz open past that due date so that you allow the students to submit late and then you can choose what to do with that information. You can choose to have it just as an information piece for you to let you know that this was late. There are even tools in the gradebook where you can set up automatic penalties, like for example, 10% per hour or 10% per uh, day penalties for being late. So it's up to you what you do with that information. If you make the due date and the until date the exact same, no late submissions will be allowed. The available from date is the date from which they can click take the quiz and start seeing and answering the questions. So I'm going to show you two different examples. Example number one is a more relaxed quiz that we're going to have open for 24 hours that they still have 60 minutes, but they can take the quiz anytime during that day. So I'm going to make this available from, let's say, 12 a.m. this morning until um, 11.59 tonight. So this is available an entire 24 hours, also going to make it due at the end of today. So this particular quiz is set up to be open for an entire day, but with a time limit of 60 minutes. So how do, do these two interact? So let's say someone starts at 8 a.m. in the morning. Once they start at 8 a.m., that time limit starts to tick off. So that means at 9 a.m. they will get cut off. If they haven't submitted by that point, it will auto submit for them. And that's all they get. So the time limit still works, even if these dates are a lot broader. The other thing to keep in mind is even though these dates are broader, the student who started at 8, p uh, 8 a.m. cannot close the browser window, come at 10 a.m. and continue. The timer will continue in the background the whole time. So at 9 a.m., even though they're not on there, their ability to continue the quiz will be cut off at 9 a.m. because the 60-minute time limit has expired. So the moment the student clicks take this quiz and starts to see questions, that is when they will start getting cut off um, 
uh, after the time limit expires, regardless of whether or not they are on Canvas. The other example I'm going to give is something more stringent. So let's make this due at 11 a.m. Okay, and we're going to make it available from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. So now this quiz is open from 10 till 11 a.m. with a time limit of 60 minutes. How do these two interact? Well, the student who starts at 10 a.m. gets until 11 a.m., that's 60 minutes. They get cut off at 11 a.m. Let's say a student starts at 10.30 a.m. The timer will not show them 60 minutes anymore. The timer will show them 30 minutes because the students are cut off at whatever comes first, whether it is the until date and time or the time limit having expired. And the time remaining that they are shown when they start the quiz will take that into account. So the student who starts at 10.30 a.m. will see the timer on the right-hand side start to tick off from 30 minutes, not 60 minutes, to represent to them that at 11 a.m. they're getting cut off. That's it. They cannot continue. So we'll, we will cover in a separate video exactly how uh, we can deal with the students who need extra time and how we need to adjust these. But in general, if the available from and until is a very tight time limit, then the students must start on time in order to get the full time range. So those are all the options that we can set up in the details section itself then the questions themselves we set them up in questions in the question tab at the very top when we click questions it will show us the questions we have and then we create the questions right here by clicking plus new question yeah, we will cover exactly um, how we create questions and the question times we can create in another video but this is where you get started. Now notice the other thing I was mentioning is that this uh, is saved uh, temporarily for me when, when I start creating it. So then well, let's say that we are done, we have completed the, the details, maybe we've added some of our questions. We do have two different bot buttons at the bottom. We have the ability to either save or save and publish. So what is the difference between these two? Save will save it just for you. So the students will not even see the title of this quiz at all in their calendar or dashboard or in the course itself. It will just be for you. Why would you pick that button instead of save and publish? Let's say you have not completed all the questions or you've added all the questions you wanted to add, but you want to first preview the quiz and make sure that everything is working as you expected before you make it available to the students, which is a very good practice to make sure that the questions are actually looking as you expect them to look. The other um, button, Save and Publish, will take this uh, quiz and make it available to the students. So let's assume that the available from date and time is not yet passed. What the students will see is they will see this uh, name in their calendar dashboard in the course if they go in the quizzes section. They will, once they click that name, all they will see is these instructions right here and a summary of the time limit, when is it going to be available, how many points is it worth. That's all information they will see in a summary right off the bat once you publish it. However, they will not see the questions until this available from date and time has passed and they have clicked take the quiz and in that case any time limit you set up here will start ticking off of course we can choose not to have a time limit for 
the quiz. Let's say we don't have a time limit for this quiz, but we have it open from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. The students will get only until 11 a.m. regardless of when they start. My other example where the quiz was open 24 hours, if I have no time limit, then the student can work on that quiz for the entire 24 hours. If they need to, they can walk away, come back to it, etc. There will not be a time limit after which it closes. So that's how we get started with quizzes. Please view the other videos to check out how to create questions and all the other options available for quizzes.